Number two, this is uh, a lunar eclipse is commonly used as some kind of proof that we see the globe Earth's shadow cast on the moon. But this again is just an assumption and it goes against any other observation that we can make of shadows. Well hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. As you can tell I'm not in my regular studio today. I'm out on the road at one of my other offices. But today we're going to hit the second of ten objections that Nick from Phuket Word has to globe science. Today's subject is going to be the lunar eclipse. Now, while I'm going to primarily work with his objections to the lunar eclipse today, on Friday we're going to have physics on Friday and I'm going to go over the lunar eclipse in some detail, including the different types. So I hope you enjoy the video and we'll be seeing you in a bit. Because the illustrations that we are given are a narrowing shadow of the Earth to the sun. Whereas in reality, shadows, no matter how far away the light goes, uh, a shadow never gets smaller than the object casting the shadow. You know, except of course that's not really what happens in reality. In reality, what happens is that the sun's rays actually do cone down because there is an umbra, which is total occlusion of sunlight, and a preumbra which is partial occlusion of sunlight. That has to do with the fact that the sun itself is much larger than the Earth. And we can demonstrate that on the Earth. Let me show you. Now on the left you can see the full shot of the experiment and on the right you see a close-up of the shadow being outlined on this background. As we move away from the background you can clearly see the shadow become smaller. This is exactly what happens both on the moon and in Phuket's own diagram. Now as you can see of this schematic diagram, the sun is larger than the earth and as a result the rays of the sun striking the earth will tend to cone down to put the moon in shadow. However, based on where the sunlight is coming from, it can actually shine past the earth a little bit on the opposite side of the earth and that is how the preumbra is formed. The third thing that is on this diagram is the red blood moon. And that has to do with refraction around the edge of the earth that causes a red color to appear on the moon during a total eclipse. This is again due to refraction and it's very much like the red color that we see at sunrise and at dusk on earth from the ground. Now once again rather than investigate this or learn about it, notice how Nick relies on personal incredulity to try and dismiss. So in actual fact when the sun is on the other side of the earth to the moon, the moon should be in complete darkness because the earth's shadow should always be cast on the moon, especially given the fact that for me here in Phuket, Thailand, near the equator, the moon and the sun go directly overhead. So if I was, we were on a globe and the moon is over here and the sun is over here, uh, which we see coming over the equator, then whenever the moon is over here and the sun is over here, the moon should always be in shadow, especially given its um, proximity to the earth. All right, well there's a couple of problems here as well that Nick's not taking into account. First of all, the earth has got an axial tilt and as a result, the path of the Sun over the Earth is between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. So it varies up to 23.4 degrees north and south of the equator. Phuket, of course, is at about 9 degrees north above the equator. Now on top of that, the Moon has got a tilt of about 5 degrees compared to the Earth's orbit around the Sun. And as a result, the Moon itself is over the Earth anywhere from about 30 degrees north down to 30 degrees south. And as a result of this mismatch in our orbits, there's only a certain period of time that we can have any kind of solar or lunar eclipse. Let me show you what I mean. 
Now in this diagram we see the orbit of the Earth and we see the orbit of the Moon. And as you can tell, they only intersect in two spots 180 degrees apart on the orbit of the Moon. These are called nodes. The only time that you can have a solar eclipse is when the Moon in its orbit is at the node on the side of the Sun. And you can only have a lunar eclipse when the Moon in its orbit is on the node on the far side of the Earth from the Sun. The remainder of the time, there can be no solar or lunar eclipses. So at most, there are only four to seven opportunities every year for a solar or a lunar eclipse to occur. But no, we, what we actually see is um, a full moon. When the moon and the sun are allegedly opposite each other, with the globe Earth in between, we actually see a fully lit moon which shouldn't happen. Well, actually, yes, it should. Unless the moon is at or very near that node opposite the sun, we should see a full moon. It should be well above or well below the shadow of the Earth. So lunar eclipses are in no way any kind of proof that the Earth is a globe. Well, actually, Nick, the only thing that you've proven is that you don't know how the eclipse occurs. It doesn't say one thing or the other about whether or not the Earth is a globe. The fact that the shadow of the Earth on the Moon is circular, which is only possible if the Earth was a globe, tells us that the Earth is a globe. And we've never seen, we've never been shown this happening from space. Considering that uh, space exploration has been going on for decades, no one has ever given us a a, a space-eye view of the Earth and the Moon. Except, of course, in this video, which shows the shadow of a solar eclipse passing across the Earth. It starts right at the bottom of the solar panel and works its way from right to left. And just for completeness, here's a partial lunar eclipse from the ISS. You notice on the first pass of the moon as it goes from the left to the top, it's a full moon. And then as it comes around again, you'll see that it goes to a partial moon from the partial lunar eclipse. Just go ahead and watch it for a minute. and the shadow cast by the Earth. Never been done. Even during uh, solar and lunar eclipses, we are never given any other view apart from what we can see from the Earth. Except, of course, I just did. So the lunar eclipse is not necessarily the Earth's shadow. It's never been proven as a scientific fact. Nick's claims do not stand up to the scrutiny of actual research by people who actually know what these things are. Now, I've demonstrated to you how the lunar eclipse occurs. We haven't really addressed whether or not it says that the Earth is a globe or not, other than the fact that the shadow cast upon the moon during the eclipse is round. The only way that the shadow of the Earth can be uniformly round in every instance of a lunar eclipse is it is the shadow of a spherical body because the Earth itself is a spherical body. Now, on Friday, we're going to have Friday Physics and we're going to go over all of the different types of lunar eclipses and how they occur and how to be able to predict when they will occur and see examples of them from the past and what we have to look forward to in the future. So, I hope you'll join me then. In the meantime, remember to hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner, and we'll be seeing you again soon. Take care, guys.